Good morning and welcome to the Morning Scoop for Wednesday, December 23rd. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Orr. The Sugar Bowl against Clemson is in nine days, single digits already. As the benefit, I guess, of an extremely weird late college football playoff selection show, I guess. Not a lot of uh, sitting around and waiting. Uh, the game against Michigan, there will be a lot of sitting around and waiting. That is still 339 days away. Uh, on Tuesday's show, I talked to Clemson beat writer Matt Connolly about where this year's Tigers team was better and worse than last year's. Today, we're going to take a similar look at where the Buckeyes stand compared to last, uh, the last time they played Clemson. I guess this morning, Tony Gerdeman, he is the beat reporter for Buckeye Scoop and my co-host for the Buckeye Weekly Podcast. Tony, thank you for joining me. Anytime, Tom, you know that. And, and we, we put that to the test. We, we do a lot of podcasts together. Uh, I think uh, we probably can preface this whole conversation with the discussion about the 2020 Buckeyes only having six games under their belts. Uh, 2019 team obviously had more than twice as many at, that, at this point. So how big a difference does that make in your mind when it comes to evaluating this year's team and where they sort of stand going into the playoff? I think it's a huge thing to try to evaluate uh, because there were times when the season where your fixes were expected to be made and then the game would get canceled and then they wouldn't be able to implement those fixes and then uh, another guy would be missing like Josh Proctor would would be out and so uh, to to like compare it to last year and the differences and um, you know, they were much more prepared last year. Everybody knew you know, Ryan Day knew more about his team. Uh, Dabo Sweeney won't know as much about this team, but I don't think that's necessarily a benefit to to Ohio State because Ohio State is still trying to figure things out. And when you don't know exactly who you can trust and what you can trust them to do, I assume that's a pretty terrifying feeling for a coach and knowing that. The numbers are what they are. You have to trust a bunch of guys and hope for the best. You prepare them as well as you can, uh, but you also see the struggles that they may have in practice or during the games. And yet, these are the guys you got to roll with. And as Ryan Day has said, you know he'll take these guys over anybody, and the, you know he loves these guys. They're one of his favorite teams to ever be around, and not just because of the stuff that goes on the field, but everything that they've been through off the field. And so, there has been a proving ground to that. But just you know, football wise there's there's the numbers are not great in terms of just the depth of certain areas that you can trust and then uh the performances have been a little bit off compared to what we've been accustomed to at ohio state yeah and and earlier this week Davos when he talked about the fact that it didn't take long to review all the film of ohio state because there were only six games to go through and it's like well that makes them more unpredictable in some ways for the tigers but it also means that they're probably a little bit more unpredictable for the Buckeye coaches as well, that they have not had a chance to test all these things out. I mean, I think Ohio State might have wanted to see what Josh Proctor and Marcus Hooker looked like next to each other against Northwestern. And then Marcus Hooker was a game time decision. And then Mark Marcus Hooker did not play. You, you don't really want to be uh, testing out your new uh, your new game plan, your new your new equipment uh, on the uh, on the live battlefield. That's that's not ideal. Um Last year, I think they, they came in with a much better sense for who they were and what they had, and they still fell just short against Clemson last year. Where do you think, I mean, there, there are areas where this year's team is probably better than last year's team. There are areas where they're probably worse, and there's areas where they're about the same. So what? let's start with one. Give me, give me one area where you think this year's Ohio State team is maybe the most improved over the 2019 one, just a position group. I, I think the linebackers, and even. Uh, as well as Pete Werner played last year at the Sam, doing everything that they asked him to do and doing it well. Middle linebacker with with Tough Borland and Baron Browning, Browning playing maybe out of position and Tough coming back from an injury where he wasn't 100% yet. And, you know, Malik Harrison was fantastic and fine last year, but all together now this year, Tough in the middle has found his footing again and, and is playing well. Baron Browning found a home at Sam. But can also flex out, you know, flex inside to to the middle. And Pete Warner has been fine and, and fantastic as his usual self in a new position at the wheel. So it's guys playing in different positions except for Tough Borland, but they're playing well. And then you've got Justin Hilliard steps in for anybody who needs it and plays well, was the defensive player of the game for the Buckeyes in the Big Ten championship game, was just a you know, sixth year. Just you, you wish for his sake and for, you know, like, Ohio State could use him next year. You know, like mm -hmm. he, there, there is a place for him, and it's not just as the fourth linebacker, but 
I mean, he has made a home at Ohio State initially in his early early in his career when he was healthy as a special team standout, and then gradually as that fourth linebacker, and just a really valuable member of the defense. And and those four together, I think, have been playing better than uh, than the group a year ago. And one of the big questions going into the the Fiesta Bowl or the uh, Sugar Bowl, sorry, put a dollar in the jar. Uh, is the status of Baron Browning? Will he be able to play? Will he not be able to play? He was sort of in that gray area, and so that'll that'll probably be a pretty big thing that will help decide how that game goes. Um, I went through and, and went through ten different position groups and graded out like where I thought they were better, where I thought they were worse, where I thought they were about the same. You tell me if you strongly agree or strongly disagree. I had four of them that I thought were better than 2019: wide receivers, tight ends. Offensive line and linebackers. So we already talked linebackers. Is is there any of the uh, wide receiver, tight end, offensive line that you think you are either strongly agree or strongly disagree with the fact that they are better than the 2019 equivalents? You know, I initially I'm thinking, well, no, not the offensive line because you know Jonah Jackson was so good, but Nick Petit, Frere, Thayer, Munford this year are better than the tackles last year, and Wyatt Davis and, and is is fine as. As always, Josh Myers, maybe about the same, maybe, you know, again, it's tough to uh, criticize players for not improving greatly from last year when we've been dealt with a, a pandemic. But yeah, I, I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm siding with that offensive line and receivers. Once you get more out of Garrett Wilson, yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you there. Of course, the tight ends, I mean, you just keep getting a year better. You keep, you, you add, you don't lose. Uh, you know, Rashad Berry is off to the NFL, but, uh, there, you know, there's there's no issues there. So yeah, I would agree with with those four. All right. So uh, those we'll, we'll say those four, those four pluses. Where do you think the biggest drop off is? And again, I had four different position groups here. And just so we're clarifying, ten total, not including special teams. I broke defensive ends, defensive tackles into kind of different different buckets. So what what area do you think is the big, biggest drop off from last year's team? The secondary, and I don't know if that's corners and safeties in your buckets or if it's all together. Yeah, uh, yes, I have I have four, and that's two of them. So okay, yes. so there you go. So yeah, I uh, I would agree with both, and certainly the safeties losing Jordan Fuller uh, and replacing them as they have that's been a big issue. The corners, we we knew that one of the questions coming into the season was what would that slot corner look like, and it, it hasn't looked like Sean Wade did last year. So yeah, I would agree there. Um, that's I mean, for me that that's the the biggest difference overall between this year and last year. I am interested, Tom. Uh, defensive tackles, do you have them uh, worse or about the same as last year? Because De- Devon Hamilton was amazing last year, but Tommy Togia and Haskell Gary have been pretty dang good too. Yeah, they are on my about the same list. Okay. So. Yeah, I because I, I had the same conversation. I had the same thought. I was like, "Wow, those guys have been so good." But it was like, "Well, last year's team was pretty." I mean, you got Robert Landers, you got Devon Hamilton. I mean, they they were pretty darn good on the inside last year, too. So yeah, I, I ended up considering that one kind of a push. But yeah, the other area where I thought there was a drop off, uh, I had running back, defensive end, and that's really just you know, and it's a little crazy to say running backs kind of not as good as last year when they have literally just literally just days ago, set a school record for individual (laughs) rushing yards in a game. But they're, you know, prior to that, they were not on pace to have a 2000 yard running back or the six game equivalent of a 2000 yard running back. And, you know, I mean, JK Dobbins, how different is last year's Fiesta Bowl if JK Dobbins doesn't get hurt? I mean, that there were probably 10 things I wrote, you know, right after that game, like here's the like 10 things that could have swung that game. And JK Dobbins getting hurt. It was one of them because he was tearing Clemson up. And then as soon as he sprains his ankle, all of a sudden, okay, well then that all of a sudden that Ohio state offense loses, loses something pretty big. So I had running backs, defensive ends, which they, they have, the defensive ends have been good. They, they haven't gotten to the quarterback, but they've been good, but they don't have a chase young. That's, I mean, and, and that's, you know, that is not a, uh, dark, a black mark against the current defensive ends. None of them are Chase Young. And, you know, maybe maybe one of them can get there at some point, but they're not there yet. And, you know, this is this is a group that lost uh, a was Dobbins a late first round or early second round pick. Second, I mean, second round pick. Yeah. Chase Young, number what, two play over player overall in the in the draft. Jeff Okuda, number three overall player in the draft. I mean, like, yes, when you lose two top three NFL picks like, yeah. <laughs> It is hard to maintain that level. 
And then you lose Jordan Fuller at the safety spot, who was a ludicrously low pick because NFL people don't watch college football, apparently. And ta-da, guess what? The guy who was super fantastic and awesomely consistent at Ohio State continued to be super fantastic and awesomely consistent at uh, for the LA Rams. How about that? Who knew? So that, that leaves our two about the same groups, defensive tackles, which we've touched on a little bit already, and quarterback. And, you know, I mean, I think everyone came into this year with the expectation that, well, Justin Fields was 41 touchdowns, three interceptions last year. He's only going to get better. How much better can he get? Will it be 42 touchdowns and two interceptions? And, and it's just, you know, he's been great at times. And at times he's looked not fantastic. So, I mean, what, is that, would you grade him about the same? Would you grade him better than he was last year? Would you grade him a little bit of a drop off? Where, where do you have him? Well, you know, so remember prior to the season, we were saying, don't be surprised if Justin Fields throws more interceptions this year, just as Tre- Trevor Lawrence threw a bunch of interceptions his early on his second season. I think he may, may have finished with eight as a sophomore, his second year as a starter, because you, the quarterbacks have more freedom as a second year starter. And they uh, maybe take more shots, take more chances, or you know, with Justin Fields' case against Indiana, not letting things die with with two of his interceptions, not just taking a sack or not throwing it away. The first interception just being a late throw, and then you know a couple more in this past game with an injured thumb, and uh, you know not having Chris Olave there, so there's issues there as well. I um, I don't think he has regressed. I uh, so. But is he this? Is he roughly as good? He's he's certainly as capable of everything he was capable of doing last year and more. So I would agree with you there. Like I, I don't expect him to be the weak link of the Ohio State offense moving forward. And um, so, yeah, I I think we everybody would like to have seen more, but that's the case for everything is this year. We would <laughs> in every every walk of life, everything. Yes, we would like to have seen more from Justin Fields and, and like to have seen, you know, six or seven more games out of him as well. And I'm sure Ryan Day would have. And then you would have a better Justin Fields. I think I think to be as good as he was last year, now to like no necessarily any regression, even though he has five interceptions and in I think his last three games. But it, it's also a testament that you are still uh, – pretty much the same player and because he's he's really really good now i mean i mentioned this earlier i came away from last year's fiesta bowl with the idea that ohio state was the better team and it took like 10 discrete and very specific events from that dobbins injury sean wade's objection uh, ejection the overturned scoop and score for jordan fuller i mean there was even there was a late muffed punt that clemson fell on that if ohio state just falls on that ball that's it i mean it took all of those things for the Tigers to win. You know, was that your assessment of, of last year's game? Is that that Ohio State was probably in a lot of ways the better team, but needed, you know, had had a lot of stuff go wrong that then they just barely lost it by one play at the very end? Yeah, I, I think after the game I was I said Ohio State would win seven out of ten, eight out of ten again. And that was that was with an injured Justin Fields. Not injured, but not one hundred percent. And I think that hampered them in the red zone. And then they had to rely on too many field goals. And we know we know how that goes, Tom. When you're kicking field goals against Clemson, it does not always go so well. Huh, but that yeah, fact, that, that a fact? That, that is a fact. Mm-hmm. And yeah, but Ohio State was the better team. And uh, I I think maybe the only people that would d- dispute that would be Clemson people. Um, because there was Ohio State was getting close to running away with that one. And they were like you know, just punishing them as, as we've seen at times where the Ohio state defensive line just does that to, to teams from the ACC. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to point any fingers at the Miami hurricanes or anything like that, even though they were a big East team back then. But uh, yeah, that seven out of 10, I, I think Ohio state wins that game. And that's without learning from their mistakes. That's just, you know, in a vacuum 10 times they win seven. Yeah. Now, this year, I, I'm going into this game with the assumption that the Tigers are the better team overall, and part of that is playing all of those extra games. I mean, that absolutely has to help that they're in late season form and Ohio State's in like eh, mid October kind of form. That I mean, that has to go into that calculus as well. But Clemson, the offensive line, is something of a question mark for them. Matt Connolly uh, from the state newspaper had him on yesterday's show. 
he said that was, I mean, when I asked him, like, where's the, the biggest area of regression? That was the first thing he mentioned, like that, that they had to replace four starters from last year. And that's, that's a question. And we have seen if you have a shaky offensive line or the other opposing team's defensive line can really get after your quarterback or really get into that backfield, that can negate a lot of other advantages in other spots. Yeah. And, and I think they, they did a good job against him last year as well until the the read option and he got he got out of uh got away from them outside and it's just if if the buckeyes can get that defensive line going and just disrupt him enough and help out the secondary as much as they can because i do think the secondary is going to need some help and that's going to be jonathan cooper tyreek smith zach harrison tommy togi haskell garrett all of these guys trying to create a problem for trevor lawrence and, and and the good thing about having defensive tackles who can pass rush is the pressure isn't just coming from the outside and you can force him to move, maybe force them into some defensive ends. But the other thing with Trevor Lawrence is he's also really good on the move. And so he could throw it from wherever. Play is never really dead if he's running around. Uh, so it's, it's going to be tough for the Ohio State secondary. I, I don't know exactly how they're going to handle it. They're going to have to play their best game on every side of the ball. But if that defensive line wins, then uh, you've got you've got a really good chance for the Ohio State offense to win as well. Yeah, if Ohio State can win the ball, battle in the trenches on both sides, that's that's probably the key to win. You know, if they can do that, if they can win on both sides of the ball, that's the pathway to to a win for Ohio State. And, and you know, I, it is it is I think absolutely possible that that does happen. But uh, we will we'll have a whole another week to talk about this game. So we'll. Uh, Tony and I are headed to New Orleans on Monday. We're going to be driving down there and maybe making a stop for something fun on the way down there to bring, bring you guys a little something different. And uh, then we will be down in New Orleans for a basically full week of preview of this game. So it should be a lot of fun. You can check that all out at BuckeyeScoop.com. But before we get to that, we have a very busy day on tap today. Let people know what's coming up today, throughout the day today at Buckeye Scoop. We've got some football and some basketball. Yeah, we'll be talking to uh, Ryan Day, talking to some players, not sure exactly who we're going to be talking about, but they will be previewing the Clemson game, talking about, uh, I'm sure, Tom, the topic of last year's game may come up, mm. and so we'll get some thoughts on that as well, but we'll get this will be our first time talking to the players since uh, I think they made the playoffs, and so uh, we'll get some thoughts from them, and then Ohio State Rutgers from Columbus, 4.30 tip-off, nice Wednesday afternoon basketball, because... You know, it's it's that time of year where the schedules are odd and uh, things like this are scheduled in the afternoon. So that would, that's uh, Rutgers, a ranked team, uh, and uh, should be pretty competitive. And uh, just a, a, a full week of Ohio State sports here at Buckeye Scoop. And uh, tomorrow morning show, we'll have Ross Fulton on to do a little bit of a recap of the uh, running game against Northwestern and why that all worked so well and what Northwestern did that open things up and whether that's something that can be carried forward against Clemson. So those are, uh, those are always great shows. We'll have that for you tomorrow. Then we'll take uh, Friday off for Christmas because you've earned it. You don't need to get, take, take the day off. You don't need to listen to this. You don't need to listen to me on, on Christmas. Take, take the day off and we'll have uh, boy, boy, will we have content for you next week. So uh, make sure you uh, sign up right now for Buckeye scoop.com. You, uh, your membership for you sign up today, your membership will cover the college football playoff, the semifinals, if Ohio State beats Clemson, it covers the national championship game. I mean, if you have thought like, eh, maybe I'll give this site a shot. Like we have, we have a brand new site. I've gotten incredible rave reviews for the new site and uh, some of the great new functions on the message board and all of that. So uh, if you have thought about joining, this would be a great time to give it a shot. Drop, you know, it is, it is the price of a lousy chain store pizza. It is the price of like, ah, I go out for a couple of cups of coffee. Like I go pick up coffee at the coffee house. Like just make coffee at home one day and ta-da, you've got another, a month of BuckeyeScoop.com, including a college football playoff semifinal, a bunch of basketball, maybe a national championship. Wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't that be a great time to be a member of BuckeyeScoop.com? So uh, sign up today and get all of that great stuff. And uh, boy, are we going to have a week full of stuff for you next week uh, coming to you from New Orleans. So cannot wait for that. Thank you guys for joining us today. Have a great day. We will talk to you tomorrow.